Congratulations. Thank you. I, I want to say this movie is, is, is exciting. It's electrifying. <laughs> Has anyone thrown, thrown that out yet? You're not the Nuts. first. No, oh, darn. Oh. No, no, you, no, they haven't. You're the <laughs> oh, you're only the second. <laughs> I'm only the second. <laughs> Anyways, hey, wonderful, wonderful movie. I, um, not a lot has been written about the character's personal side, the human side. So how did all three of you want to approach your characters? It's a great book called Empires of Light that Michael put me in contact with, his script itself, asking Alfonso a lot of questions over the time we worked together. And, yeah, just sort of digging around and, and then forgetting it all and trying to make a, a human being in a scene, you know, like any of the rest of us, but with those particular issues at that particular time. That was kind of how I approached it. Yeah, when I met Alfonso to talk about doing a movie, he, he gave me a little book that literally was called George Westinghouse. So <laughs> I just read that, good to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so when you're approaching a character like this, especially when it has something to do with science and business, do you perceive yourself to be a hero or a villain a mindset through, the, through a film like this? Well, yeah, it's hard to say, you know. I think the, the jury's still out, you know, whether technology is to our advantage or disadvantage. I think, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back. Uh, I, I just think at the end of the day, there was a, a curiosity particularly on Westinghouse's part, that is, that I think is beautiful and noble. And I think he, at the end of the day, his intentions were good. Uh, but everybody, uh, you know, there was no one standard. Everybody had a different way of going about things. I can't remember the question. I was so interested in the villain. answer. Villain. Oh, villain, yes, I'm the villain. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> think it's so easily polarized as that, really, because even amongst what is pretty loathsome, um, abhorrent behavior on, te um, Tesla's, on Edison's part, you kind of get why he gets that. I hope, I hope, maybe not, but um, I think it's certainly the intention of the story to, to point to what could have been and the grace and um, good nature of Westinghouse being rejected by a man who's been assailed by a lot of different things, but not being still enough and feeling too threatened and too worried about progress and growth to stop and listen properly, not just because he's profoundly deaf, but because he's so stuck in his ways as, a, as a, an actor of, or an inventor of the future. I mean, an actor in his history is what I mean, not an actor as in what we do. And I think that's, that's the powerful lesson, I guess, you can, that's the takeaway, is it's much better to collaborate and listen and tolerate and understand that it is to just keep driving your stake into the ground and carving out your territory and calling it yours and no one else's. Great, and, I, and I don't, I w obviously I want to give Tuppence the last question. <laughs> um, in, this, in this film, I don't know if you realize, you, st you are in the same film with so many superheroes from comic books. Oh, when are you yes. going to be in a comic book movie yourself? Oh, I don't, no plans so far. Green but Goddess. um Green Goddess. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I have no idea. I know probably as much as you. But um, yes, I felt very protected. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent answer. No harm is going to come to yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank You're you. Welcome.